How's everybody tonight? Blessed and highly favored. Yes. We are. No matter what you think. We are blessed and highly flavored. And it's a good night to, to die. <laughs> Praise God. Don't go in a nursing home and say that, amen? <laughs> it's a good day to die. <laughs> you may get thrown out. They wouldn't understand anyways. <laughs> well, some of them would. Praise God. You know, we are advancing more and more and getting closer and closer to the end of what is happening right now for this season. And what's happening is really intense because, you know, we're battling the Antichrist. And, but one of the things that's manifesting more and more and more is what we call the Luciferian agenda. The Luciferian agenda traces back to the Garden of Eden when Satan attempted to become God. That was his agenda. He is a serpent of evil whose only plan is to destroy everything of God. Again, remember, he can't create. He can only manipulate. Amen? One of the things he wants to destroy is including our free will. Our thoughts. Our environment, our health. And most of all, the souls of mankind with depopulation as a part of his agenda. The regimes are the wealthiest corporations in the world. And they move people like cattle, utilizing musical airwaves, news, media, government legislation, and rules and laws and regulations. Educational and indoctrinations, religious organizations, banking systems, food distribution, farming, pharmaceutical companies, judicial laws, military law enforcement, prisons, alcohol, <laughs> magazines, drugs, pornography, gambling, television programming, and false freedom, while slowly stealing our freedom. There's like a distraction constantly. Not only stealing our freedom, food, supply, freedom of speech, health care, jobs, coercing us into false beliefs and deception and fear to fulfill their agenda by using humanity as slaves and bringing division, hatred, self-centeredness. So mankind actually begins to destroy one another. I know that's a lot to it, and I'm not going to repeat it. So you'll have to get the teaching. <laughs> but we are in such a time right now with a <clears throat> Luciferian agenda because they know they don't have much time left. They know that they're being exposed globally. So they're pushing their agenda as much as possible and as quick as possible. In 2 Corinthians 11... Hallelujah. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 11, the Luciferian agenda. In verse 12, Paul was a pursuer of God's enemies, as we should also be. In verse 12 it says, But what I do I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in the things of which they boast. 
For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ, or Christians, or believe, so-called believers. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Ministers of righteousness. Satan ministers come with false humility, empty words of promises, lies of bondage, and false hopes. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power. They've infiltrated every area of governmental, judicial, all over. Any kind of ruling system. Again, they've become the most wealthiest individuals in the world and believe that they are God's gift to mankind. They actually believe that they're gods. It's amazing what money can do to your thoughts, huh? And 2 Timothy chapter 3. Remember, their purpose is to fulfill the Luciferian agenda. Second Timothy chapter 3. And to promote in their, in their fulfillment, they want to cause mankind to destroy one another. What they can't destroy, they cause mankind to destroy. In verse 10. Let's speak it together, please. 2 Timothy 3.10. But you have carefully followed my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions which happened to me at Antioch, Icaeum, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yes, and I also, and all who desire to what? Live godly in Christ Jesus will be what? They will be persecuted. If you choose to live right before God, you're going to be persecuted. Does everybody get that? Living a godly life will bring persecution, not only from the world, from your family, from the ex-members of your church fellowship, from employees, from political views, from imposters who will infiltrate as wolves in sheep's clothing, with selfish ambitions and unforgiveness, with false accusations. Let's go a little further. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? In verse what? But evil, uh, evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. We see that continuously. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and have been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. In other words, in this, the scriptures are God's words. It's not just a written book. He says it will bring you wisdom because the wisdom that comes from above. These are the words of God. It says we must continue to maintain the course of truth as fact finders, testing every voice of influence, submitting to the scriptures as absolute truth, and putting them into practice in all choices of life. We are in a great time of attack, and its purpose is to dismantle the church body and discredit the Bible and consider it as an enemy of the state. That's where we are right now. I'm sure everybody sees it. It says in verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man and woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, if people would truly believe in the Word of God and follow the Word of God, there wouldn't be division. There wouldn't be. It tells you how, what to do even when you are offended. But people don't do it. They'd rather go on Facebook and explain on how they feel and cause division because they've been offended. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, The Luciferian agenda is rampantly at work, but rampantly being exposed. It's unfortunate that many people have been taken captive and, and don't understand that they've been taken into the Luciferian agenda. See, if you're not following what's in the Word, you're being taken captive. And verse 18, let's speak it. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of the God. What is the message of the cross? The Bible. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jew and Greeks, Gentiles, heathens, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But God has chosen the foolish. Everyone say, I was foolish. Not anymore. I was... <laughs> But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put shame to the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in the presence in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. See, those that don't believe or follow the words of the Spirit of Christ which are written are perishing. They are perishing. They may be good people. But they're perishing. Because there's only one way out and one way home. And that's where God says, my own people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They have been taken captive by deceiving spirits and doctrines of Luciferian demons. Through, again, through media, music, news, government, political, medical, internet, technology, education, books, magazines, religious things, and so forth. And its purpose, again, is to discredit the Bible and the testimony of those who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. See, because even many who have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit deny the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They deny your testimony. I was asked to go preach to a drug program. And uh, when I got there, they said, look, there's two things you can't talk about. Tongues and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So I thought, Lord, what the heck am I doing here? He said, ask him if you can give your testimony. I said, do you mind if I give my testimony? Go for it. Well, let me tell you what happened. 
<laughs> My testimony has a serpent involved, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and tongues. <laughs> So I gave my testimony. I was never invited back there again. But truth and reality came to many people, and they wanted to know why their congregation wasn't talking about what my testimony was. Because we know the truth. It's the power of Christ. We need the power of Christ. We'll have to overcome any kind of Luciferian doctrine. But many people who have even been baptized by the Holy Spirit, when you open yourself up and compromise, there's a seed of corruption and a seed of deception that's planted. And that begins to flourish. And when that seed begins to flourish, the enemy's got an ability to release different doctrines and different belief systems. I'm telling you, there have been people who have been delivered and healed, brought through this ministry by God Almighty, and have left and turned against us. Then saying what's happening isn't true. This, that, and whatever. It's amazing to me. Why? Because they've been taken captive. Under the Luciferian agenda. Not staying connected. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. And see what happens to these individuals. Because they want to disc uh, the. Uh, Luciferian agenda wanted to discredit the Bible and the testimonies who have been baptized in the Holy Spirit to promote and vote for Luciferian agendas. People are voting and promoting Luciferian agendas and don't even realize it. Some of them are being coerced into it and don't even realize it. But it's all being exposed. It's all going to come to an end. Nobody gets away with it. <laughs> they may think they are, but they're not going to. In 1 Corinthians chapter 5, You will see, begin to see there is more suffering come to humanity. And it's because the scripture is going to be fulfilled. What you sow is what you reap. In other words, it will be self-inflicted. Does everybody understand? Self-inflicted torment, self-inflicted things because of what people sow, they are going to reap. In verse 9. 1 Corinthians 5, 9. He said, I wrote to you, Paul wrote to his congregation, one of the congregations in Corinthians. Corinth, and he said that, uh, I, write, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexual immoral people. Yet I certainly did not mean with sexual immoral people of this world. Or with covetous or with extortioners or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. But now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a what? Brother. A brother or sister. Who is sexually immoral or covetous. Or an idolater or a reviler. Now a reviler is an individual that speaks words against the brethren. They're defaming words. They're insulting words. Does everybody understand? They're abusive words. Or a drunken or extortion or not even to eat with such a person. For what have I to do with judging those outside who, who, are, who are outside? Do you not judge those who are what? Inside. In other words, he's talking about inside the body. God takes care of the ones outside of the body. But there's so much garbage inside of the body where people have been taken captive by the Luciferian agenda and don't even know it. I'm going to tell you, one of the spirits that really take hold of this and infiltrate men and women is a Jezebel spirit. Because it takes hold of men and women. And it's nothing but a one a controlling spirit, self-righteous, self-ambition, as a blamer, a gossiper and an insulter of righteousness and truth. It says, but those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away yourselves from yourselves. He, God calls that individual evil. 
there are brothers and sisters living a life not married under the law of God or even any person that speaks abusive, insulting, or damaging words of offense. They've been taken captive by Jezebelic revilers, not able to follow sound doctrine or follow the Bible. What does the word say when you're offended? Go to your brother. Not go to Facebook. Does everybody understand? See, they can't follow this because they're too self-centered, too selfish. In 1 John chapter 2. Hallelujah. You know, it's amazing to where individuals who have the same belief system, they flock together. They become partners. You know, they're like Jezebel sisters and brothers, you know. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18. And God warns us, stay away from them. Do not even eat with them. Stay away. Why? Because then you promote what they're doing. Verse 18, let's speak it. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us. Now, wait a minute. The Antichrist doctrine is a Luciferian doctrine. Amen? They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have what? Continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest. That none of them were of us. Many people who leave a fellowship, offensive or somewhat, they usually begin to manifest. You can usually just look up on Facebook and you see all kinds of words that they want to say. Because they've been taken captive by the Luciferian doctrine and not even know it. He said, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. You know it. We know. If you're truly in relationship with the Lord, see, what happens is one of the things the enemy loves to do is sear the conscience. He does it with self-justification, self-centeredness, because all self-justification, self-centeredness, and selfish ambitions nullify and prevent the voice of God from bringing conviction. And the only thing that they can do is they respond to blame, race, <laughs> or judgment. You're judging. You're stinking right, I am. I'm judging your fruits. We're fruit inspectors. Amen? They can't judge their own fruits, though. Boy, but if you judge their fruits, they hate you. And they let everybody know how they feel about you. The Antichrist, Spirit, Luciferian doctrine. You know what it says? The doctrine is do what I want. Do what I feel like. So they say what they want. They do what they want. And there is no fear of the Lord. Because if there was, they wouldn't be doing it. The anointing brings conviction unless the conscience is seared. I'm going to say it again. The anointing brings conviction unless the conscience is seared. Galatians 5. Oh, happy days. Let's speak it. But you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the what? For the flesh that opens the door. But through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word. Even as this, you shall love your brother as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish or desire. Not using freedom for sin or the indulgence of the flesh. That opens the door to the demonic activity. The Luciferian agenda. Remember, that when, when the word tells us about corruptible seeds being planted, that is a doctrine. That is a word from the powers of darkness. It is a word that they try to water, water, so it grows. Then one word becomes multiple words. And it becomes a doctrine. So a person is overcome in their mind, overcoming what they can see, overcoming what they can discern. They become self-centered. And the fear of the Lord becomes more and more distant. They become more compromising and more complacent and more lazy in fighting spiritually. In 2 Timothy chapter 4. In fact, their loyalty will begin to drift also. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it together. I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. My goodness, that's happening. By, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the thing, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry or your calling. Not many individuals will be able to endure. They won't endure the words of the Bible or true testimonies of, of born-again individuals. This is called the great falling away, and we're seeing it increase more and more and more. In Second Peter chapter 2, Second Peter chapter 2. In verse 18. Luciferian in doctrine is penetrating and influencing and being released everywhere you look at, everywhere you go. Of course, they know their time is running out, so they're moving as fast as possible to destroy everything that they can. In verse 18, let's speak it. For when they speak great swelling words of emptiness, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. Why they promise them liberty, they themselves are slaves of corruption. Sounds like most politicians these days. For by whom a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and overcome. The latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and is so having washed to her wallowing in the mire. You know, the word says when you begin to build on the things God freed you from, it's called an abomination. 
They have a form of godliness and wisdom, but are slaves of corruption, gossipers, backbiters, knowing the truth of the word, but ref refusing to obey it. And James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Verse 13. 313. What does it say? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy, self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. So I want you to know that the Luciferian agenda promotes wisdom from beneath, not from above. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Earthly wisdom, essential, prideful, self-seeking, demonic. The above wisdom is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to submit without self-centeredness, selfishness, and self-righteousness. And Ephesians chapter 5. You know, people try to bow out of and try and escape from certain things of belief. So they call themselves agnostic or uh, what they call non-believing, you know. But it's still a Luciferian doctrine. <laughs> and they don't understand that. I'm an atheist. That's a Luciferian doctrine. Oh, I don't believe in any God. Right. Your Luciferian doctrine. It's an antichrist spirit. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Let's speak it. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but what? Rather, expose them. So you expose, you expose uh, should you expose people that call themselves Christians that are saying that they're brothers and sisters? Yes. If they're gossipers or liars, they're drunkards, they're doing things that you know are promoting sin, you are to expose them. Does everybody understand that? You know, people still have that jail mentality in their mind. Well, I don't want to squeal on anyone. No, you're rescuing their lives. Because if you don't and something happens to them, the blood is on your hands. If you don't expose it, blood is on your hands for what they did. Verse 12. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See, then you work, walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't be drunk with gossip. Wine, self-seeking, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit of the living God. Now look at this, speaking one another with psalms and hymns, in other words, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God, in other words, respecting one another. You know, God honors your voice, even if you sound like a cow. 
Your neighbor might not like how you sound, but God loves it. And that's all that matters. Amen? Hallelujah. Or to what? Expose it. Philippians 2. Hallelujah. Philippians 2, starting at verse 1. Praise God. Let's speak it together. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord or of one mind. Let nothing be done through what? Selfish ambitions or conceit, but in loneliness of mind, let each one esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of cross. Therefore God also high, has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth, and those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, beloved as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure, and do all things without complaining and disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation that's ruled by Luciferian doctrines, and doctrines of demons and deceiving spirits, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the what? Word of life, which is the word of life as the Bible, isn't it? And the voice of the Spirit. So that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Again, we are in a time right now where the Luciferian agenda is just rampant. It's everywhere, no matter where you look. And many of the people, and they're doing a very good job in causing division in the body of Christ. They're trying to dismantle the body. And they're trying to discredit the Word of God. The Word of God is being discredited by many believers because they don't follow the Word of God. They just do what they feel like, speak what they feel like, without searching the Word of God and following it through. And you can't do that. It brings an open door to demonic influence. Amen? This is where we've got to mature and come out of the arena. Where we've got to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow. That doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. You know? Everybody's going to make a mistake. But you get up. And you go forward. Don't look back and pick it up and try and fix it. Repent and move on. Amen? You may repent for a few days, but it's okay. Praise God. <laughs> but you know, all things are going to work to the good. Even your mistake is going to work to the good. You may not know that or understand that. So many times our mistakes are actually helping us. Now, I'm not trying to go out and say make mistakes all day, you know. Or do things in the flesh. But our mistakes are exposing something that needs to be taken care of or exposing something in someone else that needs to be taken care of. Amen? So, Lord, we just want to say thank you for your word and preparation. You said be ready in season and out. And, Lord, we want to be ready season, in season and out. If any attack or agenda, or Luciferian agenda, it's anti-Christ, that we can overcome every area. And not be deceived because the anointing that is within us guides us to all truth. And we thank you, Lord. We honor you and we bless you. And we give you all the glory in Jesus' name.